It is the shadow that defines our modern world, a silent force shaping our every move. More than just a source of energy, this substance is the lifeblood of global trade, industry, and the connections that bind our civilization. Every 24 hours, the Earth relinquishes over 100 million barrels, a quiet but constant reminder of the dense black resource that underpins our prosperity. The journey to unlock its power is a meticulous one. Drawn from sediments laid down millions of years ago, the crude liquid is piped into colossal distillation towers. Here it is carefully separated into gasoline, diesel, and natural gas, with other fractions becoming the essential building blocks of modern infrastructure. After this refining process, each drop is transformed. It becomes the power for our engines, the light for our sprawling cities, and the very foundation for countless industrial applications that define our way of life. It is a simple, dark liquid, yet its price can shake the foundations of the global economy. For decades, oil has been regarded as the very lifeblood of the modern world. Its influence reaches far beyond powering cars, airplanes, and ships, seeping into electricity production, plastics, chemicals, and thousands of other industries. A minor fluctuation in its price can unleash a powerful chain reaction. As transportation costs surge, goods become more expensive, and inflation rises, directly affecting the daily lives of millions of families. To sustain this colossal resource, workers must spend long shifts on remote offshore rigs or deep underground. The oil industry is known for salaries that can surpass $100,000 a year, but in exchange, workers endure grueling 12 to 13 hour shifts in noisy environments. They spend weeks away from their families, living with the ever-present risk of explosions or fatal accidents. It is a profession both enticing and unforgiving, where sweat, strength, and even safety are traded so that the flow of energy never stops, keeping the world in motion. A forgotten world lies buried beneath the waves, holding the energy of ages. To reach it, humanity would have to build cities of steel upon the open ocean. Far below the Earth's crust, immense reserves of oil and gas lie trapped within sedimentary layers formed millions of years ago, the very fuel that powers our modern world. But these vast deposits are not found on land. They are concealed thousands of meters under the crushing weight of the sea. The quest to tap this hidden resource demanded the creation of colossal machines, offshore drilling rigs. The genesis of these ocean-bound cities begins not at sea, but on land. In sprawling shipyards, gigantic steel frames, each weighing tens of thousands of tons, are forged and then carried out to the open water by specialized transport vessels. Upon reaching their designated coordinates, fixed platforms are carefully lowered into the water. Their immense steel legs are driven deep into the seabed, anchored with concrete to create a foundation strong enough to withstand the forces of the ocean in waters between 200 and 400 feet deep. Yet further from the coast, where the seafloor plummets into trenches thousands of meters down, a different kind of structure is required. Here, engineers deploy semi-submersible rigs, marvels of balance that float on massive submerged pontoons. Held steady by anchor chains stretching for thousands of feet, they can operate with precision at depths reaching up to 12,000 feet, a distance 12 times the height of the Eiffel Tower. Directly on the seabed, a critical component known as the subsea wellhead is installed. This system functions as a colossal valve sitting just a few feet above the ocean floor and enduring pressures hundreds of times greater than those on the surface. Its placement demands absolute precision and accuracy measured in inches and is orchestrated by remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs. Plunged into the absolute darkness of the abyss, these robotic arms maneuver and connect multi-ton steel components, welding the structures shut and meticulously securing the vital pipelines. From this wellhead, a torrent of oil and gas begins its journey through a vast network of subsea pipelines that snake across the ocean floor for dozens of kilometers. Each pipe is sheathed in anti-corrosion layers, welded together in countless sections and ceaselessly monitored. The slightest crack here could unleash an environmental catastrophe. High above on the surface, towering over the waves are the floating fortresses of the operation, FPSOs. These floating production 
storage, and offloading units are not rigidly fixed to the seabed. Instead, they are tethered by enormous steel chains, allowing them to ride the ocean swells while remaining securely connected to the intricate network below. A single FPSO can hold a staggering 2 million barrels of oil, functioning as both a preliminary processing facility and a massive floating reservoir before its cargo is transferred to intercontinental tankers. This intricate chain of fixed rigs and semi-submersibles, of deep-sea wellheads and sprawling pipelines, of colossal floating platforms, stretches from the planet's hidden depths to the sunlit surface of the ocean. It is a monumental journey that transforms ancient, dormant energy into the very lifeblood of our modern world. It promises immense wealth, buried deep beneath the waves, but to claim it is to dance with disaster. The quest begins far from land, where survey vessels patrol the open ocean. From their decks, engineers lower massive acoustic transmitters into the sea, sending sound waves plunging toward the seabed. A vast network of sensors listens for their return, capturing the faint echoes that bounce back from the depths. This acoustic data is then painstakingly assembled into a three-dimensional seismic map, revealing ancient sedimentary layers where oil and gas may have been trapped for millennia. But a map is only a guide. To know for certain, a drilling rig is moved into position over the promising location. Here, hundreds of steel pipes, each nine meters in length, are threaded together. They form a colossal drill string designed to pierce through the water and into the rock below. At its very tip, a drill bit armed with ultra-hard alloy teeth pulverizes the formation with relentless rotation. After the bit carves a path, the drilling pauses and an electronic eye is sent down into the darkness. Deep beneath the ocean floor, this logging tool emits a chorus of electrical pulses, sound waves, and gamma rays that probe the surrounding rock. The returning signals travel back to the surface, translated into data that exposes the formation's porosity, permeability, and the immense pressure held within. These crucial numbers will decide the fate of the well, whether an investment of 50 to 100 million dollars will yield a productive oil field or simply become a dry hole abandoned forever. Yet this entire operation balances on a knife's edge. A single miscalculation in managing reservoir pressure can trigger a catastrophic blowout, unleashing an environmental disaster costing billions to contain. For this reason, every single step is meticulously controlled as the smallest error could turn an ambitious project into a global tragedy. Beneath the crushing weight of the ocean, a force of unimaginable power lies in wait. Taming it requires a fortress of steel, a final bulwark against catastrophe. Once the drill breaches the reservoir, the raw borehole is fortified with a sleeve of steel casing. This entire structure is then sealed with cement, locking it into the surrounding rock to stabilize the volatile formation. At the wellhead on the ocean floor, engineers install the blowout preventer, a colossal steel block weighing tens of tons. Its powerful valves can clamp shut around the drill pipe or seal the well entirely in an instant, designed to contain pressures that surge beyond 10,000 PSI. With the well secured, extraction begins. Initially, the reservoir's own immense natural pressure is enough to drive oil and gas upward through the production tubing. But as this pressure inevitably wanes over time, artificial lift systems must take over. Electric submersible pumps can draw up to 20,000 barrels per day, while gas lift injection lightens the crew to help maintain a steady flow. What emerges on the platform is not pure oil, but a raw mixture of crude, gas, water, and fine sand. This turbulent flow is immediately channeled into multi-stage separators, here, gas is separated for export or re-injected to sustain reservoir pressure. The collected water is meticulously treated to remove oil and solids before being discharged back into the sea under strict regulations, while the crude undergoes further processing to purge it of salts. Throughout this entire process, thousands of sensors constantly monitor pressure, temperature, and flow rates. Modern platforms transmit this data via satellite to onshore control centers, allowing for remote intervention. If an anomaly like a sudden pressure drop is detected, the system automatically triggers alarms and can even shut down the well, making production a tightly integrated chain from separation to storage. It is a stage demanding absolute precision, 
where the smallest error can cost millions and scar the marine environment. After this preliminary treatment, the crew begins its journey to shore. For fields near the coast, subsea pipelines stretch for dozens of kilometers, delivering oil directly to land. In more remote deep water fields, the crude is pumped onto specialized tankers or floating storage units, each capable of carrying millions of barrels. From there, this ancient energy, formed over millions of years, embarks on its final voyage to refineries and eventually into the fabric of human life. While offshore wells plunge straight into the depths, the quest for oil on land follows a far more intricate and demanding path. In places like the United States, now the world's leading producer, this process unfolds on a scale that is both complex and incredibly expensive. It all begins with a hunt, a meticulous search through the Earth's crust. Engineers unleash seismic waves and conduct exploratory drilling, analyzing rock samples to pinpoint shale formations porous enough to harbor pockets of oil and gas. When a promising location is confirmed, the drill bit embarks on a remarkable journey turning from a vertical descent to a horizontal path deep underground. These wells snake through the rock for thousands of meters, maximizing their exposure to the hydrocarbon-rich reservoir. But drilling alone is not enough. To free the trapped resources, a technique of immense power is required. Hydraulic fracturing, a high-pressure torrent of millions of liters of water, sand, and chemicals is forced down the well at pressures that can surpass 10,000 PSI. This colossal force shatters the surrounding rock, creating a network of countless microfractures. The grains of sand carried in the fluid lodge themselves into these new fissures, propping them open so the oil and gas can finally escape. As the pressure is released, the liberated hydrocarbons begin their ascent, channeled toward the surface through production tubing. What emerges, however, is not a clean stream of fuel, but a raw mixture of crude oil, natural gas, water, and sediment. Back at the well site, this slurry enters a series of multi-stage separators where oil is drawn off into holding tanks. Gas is compressed for pipelines, and water is treated for reuse. This method has unlocked staggering volumes of energy, elevating the United States to the position of the world's largest oil producer. Yet the price is equally immense, with each well costing tens of millions of dollars and consuming vast quantities of water. A single error can trigger a cascade of consequences, from chemical leaks and contaminated groundwater to the very ground itself sinking. From the Earth's depths, a thick, black liquid arrives. Its destiny is to become the lifeblood of modern motion. Once delivered to the sprawling steel labyrinth of the refinery, the crude oil begins its metamorphosis, starting with the pivotal process of fractional distillation. This technique artfully separates the raw petroleum into its various components based on their unique boiling points. The journey starts in a roaring furnace where the oil is heated to between 650 and 670 degrees Fahrenheit. Under this punishing heat, the liquid erupts into a vaporous mixture. This superheated cloud is then guided into a colossal fractionating column, a tower that soars several stories into the sky. Inside, the column is lined with dozens of trays each positioned at a specific height and held at a precise temperature. As the vapor ascends, it gradually cools, allowing different hydrocarbons to condense at different levels. Near the base, where the heat remains most intense, the heaviest fractions like lubricating oils and dense residues settle out. Just above them, diesel fuel begins to collect, followed by kerosene on the next tier of trays. Within the tower's midsection, Vapors cool to a range between 90 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit, condensing into the raw liquid that will become gasoline. At the very top, the lightest gases such as methane, propane, and butane are captured. Yet the gasoline drawn from the column is not yet fit for an engine. It must now endure further chemical refinement, beginning with catalytic cracking, a process that shatters heavy molecules into lighter, more useful ones. Reforming then restructures these molecules to elevate the octane number before a final blending stage introduces specialized additives to ensure clean combustion, prevent engine knock, and lower emissions. At last, the finished gasoline is transferred to massive storage tanks, awaiting its final distribution. From there, it travels through an intricate network of pipelines, rail cars, and tanker trucks to reach fueling stations worldwide. Through these precise engineering steps, 
humanity transforms a dark, viscous substance into a clear, volatile fuel ready to power billions of vehicles across the globe.